Good evening everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, uh, one of the Upakiles is called Palasa. Now Palasa uh, comes under one of the Upakiles in uh, the uh, early Buddhist uh, discourses as I told you in the previous discussion, previous uh, short talks. So what is Palasa? Palasa simply means uh, a disquality of somebody. If somebody um, is to uh, dominate other people uh, in various ways at the same time uh, trying to equalize other people's qualities that that person may not have uh, in a bad way that is called palasa for example like uh, i would uh, give you an example there is someone who is um, not that successful like somebody else but this person when uh, a con when a when a conversation uh, uh, is going on, uh, uh, if somebody want to talk about that person who is already successful, this person uh, wants to dominate the conversation. Uh, at the same time, he wants to equalize. Say, hey, I have the same quality. I have the same success. Uh, so, why even uh, you guys gonna talk about this particular person? Because I have the same thing. So he wants to kind of like, he or she wants to kind of like underscore uh, the other person by uh, equalizing uh, the success, growth, uh, whatever virtues, good virtues uh, 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 that other people may have. So basically, uh, he or she may do this by, uh, you know, dominating uh, or manipulating. Because in English, we know uh, domina uh, dominating or manipulating, uh, these are two uh, types of, uh, you know, uh, context. For example, if somebody dominates, then we know that he or she uses extra control, extra power um, on anybody. Uh, the other people can see, notice that uh, this person uh, is dominating. But when it comes to manipulation, other people can notice, uh, you know, um, on the surface level, they can feel that there is a subtle, there is a, uh, you know, tricky type of uh, controlling that is uh, going on uh, behind um, of this person's, uh, uh, you know, actions, words, and whatever the whatever the behavior, whatever the responses. So basically, palasa means someone who is, uh, you know who is trying to equalize uh, uh, the virtues, good virtues, or success, or uh, whatever, whatever the success of anybody uh, into that person uh, in a very dominating way. The simple reason of why someone uh, uh, may be into palaza is that that person wants to underscore uh, the virtue uh, or the success or the growth, uh, whatever the good things of other people. So um, this is what I'm going to talk to you today. So basically, uh, palasa, I would say domineering or insolence uh, in English. And uh, how can we notice uh, uh, a person who has palasa? Uh, one of the easiest ways to spot someone who is uh, into palasa is, is that we can see someone interferes a lot. So that means uh, uh, this person may have uh, palasa because he wants to interfere the conversation and then um, uh, wants to show off and he wants to say that, you know, I have the same thing. Uh, you don't even talk about other people like that. I have the same thing. He wants to kind of like, he or she wants to kind of like, you know, um, underscore or not acknowledge uh, the good things of other people. Now the question arises uh, not there may be people who are uh, dominating uh, or who want to dominate. Uh, uh, I mean, the question arises how we can work with such people. Uh, I mean, a, a person who has palasa, right? So I would, uh, um, I would actually uh, deal with some of the techniques that you could probably use uh, to, uh, you know, tackle with or work with such a person in your life because we may have, you know, encountered uh, this kind of a person who has palasa, who has a domineering character and then equalizing, um, you know, good things of other people and then trying to underscore uh, other other people, right? So one of the ways to work with such a person is to 
keep yourself cool and maintaining your composure sometimes they want to uh, they want us to uh, you know uh, push our buttons uh, you know pull our strings you know uh, because they want us to be vulnerable if you try to keep yourself cool and maintain your composure uh, they can't do anything right but if you're going to react right away you're in trouble you are trapped with that you know uh, response that come from uh, such a person right so one of the things is to uh, uh, to keep yourself cool and maintain your composure uh, not without uh, getting uh, you know uh, overwhelmed or excited uh, to respond back if you think that you can handle this person and you are in a big trouble you need to have a you need to keep a distance because we need this distance to um, keep us safe and then uh, not more vulnerable uh, from those people or, the, or, or from a person like that that's one other thing also uh, this is something uh, for your mentality uh, this is actually uh, one of the best teachings from Buddhism that is to depersonalize any bad response that come from a uh, person who has palasa uh, when such a person is trying to attack you with whatever the bad things to underscore or equalizing you need to depersonalize those responses from you if you the moment you depersonalize that means anatta right you don't believe in that previous person who 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 uh, was attacked by such a person the moment you think that you need to depersonalize uh, whatever the bad response that come from such a person who has palasa uh, gives you lot of strength that you are not into this vulnerability that uh, that are uh, being uh, uh, you know directed at you from such people or such a person so depersonalize and at the same time you can uh, transform or shift your uh, shift shift those reactions um, into proactive uh, you know activities rather you getting uh, you know so much trapped in such responses uh, you don't need to react right away. You need you can transform, shift uh, those uh, you know bad things, uh, or whatever whatever you think to that person at the same time, uh, in a better way by being proactive. So you're not in trouble. Um, another thing is to uh, think about uh, how you can put the spotlight on them and reclaim your power, because if if you think that there is someone at your workplace, uh, you know, in your family, uh, in other places where you always struggle with, uh, you probably need to observe their, you know, constant um, activities and the behavior, how they usually react, how they usually respond to things. If you can, if you can really observe these things over time, you can put your spotlight on them so that they won't get a chance to, you know, put you down they won't get a chance to make you vulnerable so if you can put your spotlight on their subtle or kind of like major actions or whatever the words then uh, you are one step closer to this uh, you know relief uh, from such people and uh, one other way one of, one of the other ways to uh, work with such a person who has palasa as I told you palasa a person who has palasa has a domineering uh, you know temperament character they want to dominate they want to dominate you at the same time they want to uh, make you vulnerable they want to they want to say that uh, assuming that you are a good person you have good virtues that they are nothing to that person because that person you know proclaims that that person also has the same thing but uh, in reality it's not he, he or she has not such qualities such good things but he wants he or she wants to equalize uh, such good things to underscore you without you know without being direct so uh, one of the ways to one of the ways to uh, you know work with this mentality uh, with such people is to um, you know um, to be very wise sometimes you need you, need, you don't need to react right away take some time right uh, let's say somebody uh, who has palasa is to uh, attack you uh, in different ways you probably need to uh, be silent don't need to react at the same time if you take uh, probably two three 
four five days for, for a week uh, then you are in a better position to understand and probably let it go so that's one of the other techniques so I mean there are a couple of techniques like this so uh, if you think that you are working with a, a person who has palasa uh, which means uh, that person has a domineering character who dominates you uh, probably mani manipulates you at some point then you need to uh, uh, understand these techniques uh, basically starting from depersonalization and uh, not being vulnerable to such people you can uh, you know handle and then you can uh, you know better respond to such people so I hope that you learn uh, uh, you learn about uh, this this quality called palasa and how to uh, work with uh, people who has palasa in your life and palasa is one of the uh, a bad quality uh, which prevents someone from becoming uh, sotapanna. So it's 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 a pretty uh, interesting and very serious thing. So one needs to uh, understand this uh, nature, this this uh, whole thing, so that uh, he or she can uh, overcome one of the upakiles. There are sixteen upakiles, so this is one of them. This comes under. Uh, under six of uh, under under six of uh, upakilesas that prevent someone from attaining sotapanna. So I hope that uh, you can work uh, with palasa uh, people who have palasa, and uh, you can uh, you know uh, you can actually uh, uh, you know uh, be more comfortable with such people next time, so that you don't need to worry. So uh, try to use uh, these techniques and then uh, try to find your balance and your relief and your peace at the end. Thank you.